Today, new ways to manage your Google conversions, why the supply chain issues are going to hit the smaller players the hardest, Pinterest joins the live shopping trend, how well do you know your customers, less well than you think, and the case of the blue check mark that wasn't. It's Monday, November 1st, 2021. Happy World Vegan Day. I'm Todd Maffin from EngageQ Digital, and here's what you missed today in Digital Marketing, episode 495. We start with some new ways to track your sales, this time coming from Google, which today announced three new features to manage your conversions. First, conversion goals. This is a new way that will optimize toward your objectives at the account or campaign level. Quoting Google. As you create new campaigns, you'll be able to tell Google Ads which specific business goal your campaign should optimize for. For example, let's say you're an online clothing retailer. Going forward, you can set a purchase as your account default goal so that all your campaigns can optimize for that outcome. Within this purchase goal, you'll also be able to define which specific conversion actions, such as completed sale, should be used for bidding. You'll start to see your conversion actions grouped by these new conversion goals when you create new campaigns over the next few weeks. Your existing conversion, conversion optimization, and bidding settings will not be changed. This means no action needs to be taken on your part, unquote. So I I might be missing something here, but is there any reason why we would all want an entire account locked to a single, to a single objective? I'm, I must be missing something. Anyway, second, tag assistance support, a tool that will help you confirm that your conversion tags are working as intended. This will help you diagnose any issues with your conversion actions and alert you if there's an error, such as unverified conversion actions, inactive tags, or no recent conversions. They've also added a little pop-up panel inside Ads Manager called Explanations, which will give you insights into large changes in your Google Ads account performance. There's a link to today's announcement with all the details in today's premium newsletter, which you can get a 14-day free trial for at todayindigital.com slash newsletter. A piece today in Retail Dive suggests small businesses may have an advantage with this year's supply chain issue, but they cannot avoid holiday shipping headaches. Several factors will make the shipping season even tougher for small businesses. While big businesses bulk up on seasonal workers in order to meet demand, small businesses often do the job themselves or with a shoestring staff. Additionally, Amazon and other national retailers have changed expectations about how quickly an item will be delivered to a buyer, expectations that small sellers often cannot meet. Once a product is shipped, it is nearly impossible to control what happens next or when a customer can really expect their package. During the peak season of 2021, UPS expects demand to exceed capacity by about 5 million pieces per day. To keep up with rising demand, companies like UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service have instituted peak shipping surcharges, which will cut into the bottom line for small businesses. The Retail Dive piece is pretty comprehensive, and if these are issues that are keeping you up at night, you can find it at RetailDive.com in the post called It's a Ho-Ho Horrible Shopping Season for Small Businesses Too. How well do you know your customers? According to a new survey, you may not know your customers as well as you think you do. In order to better understand the direct-to-consumer customer perspective and the retailer's view of that perspective, ScaleFast and Retail Dive surveyed 203 retailers and 284 shoppers. Here is what the survey found, quoting Retail Dive. Retailers believe their websites are easier to buy from than brand websites and have a 15% point advantage in their product assortment. Customers, however, say brand websites are superior in providing a deeper assortment of products. Both retailers and customers are bullish on emerging experiences and specialty stores. Retailers say they'll be offering flash sales, 39% of them say that, and resales of pre-owned goods, 33%. 44% of consumers say they will be looking for flash sales, and 22% say they'll be looking for new or limited product drops. Most retailers, 9 out of 10 in fact, offer emerging experiences several times a year, unquote. The survey points out opportunities in which brands can fill the needs of today's DTC customers. First, direct relationships are the key to meeting new expectations of DTC customers. Quoting Olivier Schott, the founder at ScaleFast, that direct relationship creates a feedback loop informing future product development, marketing voice, and inventory planning. Owning your customer data 
is critical to making smart, data-driven decisions, and as regulation and privacy policies tighten, brands are losing access to purchase data, making it all the more important to own customer information outright. Unquote. Number two, in terms of opportunities, recognize the value and benefits of pre-sales. And three, use technologies to reduce the risks of creating an emerging experience. Again, quoting Schott, shoppers want to feel connected to a brand and will provide first-party data in exchange for a unique or more personalized experience. Just when Instagram says goodbye to IGTV, Pinterest says hello and is going one step further into live shopping. The social platform has announced Pinterest TV, a series of live, original, and shoppable episodes featuring creators on Pinterest. Quoting the announcement, Pinterest TV episodes are refreshed each weekday and will be recorded and available for pinners to view on demand and save and rewatch later. Beginning November 8th, episodes will air Monday to Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. on iOS and Android. Each Friday, products will drop in a live shopping setting where pinners can take advantage of discounts from brands. Along with Pinterest TV, Pinterest is launching a virtual studio where Pinterest producers work directly with each creator to develop unique content, providing backstage AV support and go live with engaging episodes. We don't often cover security patches here since they happen a million times a day, but every once in a while comes one that's used a lot in our space, and that happened today. Reports say the popular WordPress marketing plugin Optin Monster has a huge security hole that lets hackers potentially take over an entire website. WordPress's security arm WordFence says the bug comes from a failure in how Optin Monster implemented the plugin as part of their code known as REST API. This is the part of the system that lets third-party plugins and themes manage and publish content. There is an update available now, and you should go patch it if you're using Optin Monster. The version you should be updating to is 2.6.5. Google My Business will now let you hide the fact that you have seen a customer's message through a new read receipt setting in its messaging setup. With read receipts, you can show your customers who message you via Google Map or Search if you have read their message or not. Quoting Google, once you turn on chat, customers will find a chat button on your business profile and will be able to message you at any time. After a recipient opens a new message, the sender gets a read status under the message. This status appears for whoever sent the message in a conversation, either you or your customer, unquote. So if you'd like to change this, go to Google My Business, click Messages, then Settings. If you have multiple profiles, open the one you want to manage, of course, and turn on or off the setting called Read Receipts. Just when you think Facebook couldn't screw things up, actually, no, you don't use the music. Use the, use the, um, the, the goofy music. Here we go. Ah, that better. Just when you think Facebook couldn't screw things up more, comes word that moderators for the social platform have verified a page for entrepreneur Elon Musk. Except it wasn't Elon Musk at all. It was a fan page that basically repurposes his tweets. <laughs> I guess that was enough for Facebook to slap the blue checkmark on the page, signaling that this totally is the real Elon, guys. It's not like the page is being shady or anything. It speaks about Musk in the third person. Hell, it even reads, this is a fan page in the main about section. Also, there are only 10 posts on the entire page. The earliest one, not even two weeks old. Also, except for reposts of a handful of tweets, the only other posts on the page was a photo of him and a notification that the page updated its profile picture. Also, this page used to be named Kazito Gavin, apparently for soccer player Gavin Kazito. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, the URL for the page cuts off the end of the word official. It's facebook.com slash Elon Musk office, which, as The Verge noted today, doesn't seem very official. Oh, also, the page is managed by people in Egypt. How do I know? The platform itself discloses this about every page in the page transparency section, which... I assume Facebook itself has access to. At the time of this episode's production, the page was still up. 
still verified, though since the Verge article story this afternoon, it started posting that you send me $1,000 in Bitcoin and I'll send you $2,000 back scam that took over Twitter briefly. Facebook's verification rules say to be verified, you must share government ID, like a driver's license or passport or articles of incorporation. Unless, you know, you don't. 70 kids, that's how many uh, we had at our door. I know this year because I counted. Last year, we completely underbought in terms of candy. I was not going to make the same mistake this year. We overbought. We now have candy for months, my wife and I. But I, I time logged it too, so I know how many kids in which hour and roughly the age at what point. I wanted to know, like, at what point did the kids start getting older? It's around 7.30 in our neighborhood. Everything was done by about 8, 8.15 or so. It's nice having data, isn't it? Yes, I live streamed it on my TikTok account for a couple of hours. I'd set up this big game show thing where lights flash and I had a spinny wheel and they could win more candy or uh, or a prize. There were actually some really good prizes if they land on that, that one out of the 14 slots that was the big prize. And then as I started getting crankier as the night went on, I took one of the, one of the uh, spinny slots off and turned it into you give me candy <laughs> if you land on this. I didn't make the little kids do it, but... Two of the older kids did, and um, I enjoyed two bags of popcorn as a result of that. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. Talk to you tomorrow. You spun me around like a lucky charm, and we twirled around and around the night the zombies came to town. Right now, one in seven people around the world needs a pair of glasses but can't get them. That's why One Sight exists, to help people everywhere get the glasses they need to learn more, earn more, and see a clearer future. How can you support One Sight's mission in communities around the world? All it takes is a simple donation to improve someone's life by giving them clear vision. Donate today at onesight.org. That's O-N-E-S-I-G-H-T dot org. To inspire tomorrow's brightest minds, educators need today's best tools. Introducing Verizon Innovative Learning HQ, the next-gen online portal that helps educators inspire curiosity through free access to immersive educational experiences and standards-based lessons and training. Educators can integrate the latest technology into the classroom and bring out the best in their students. It's all part of our commitment to help close the digital divide and leave no educator behind. Register today at verizon.com learning. 